What's happening, Hardscapers? This is episode 180 of the How to Hardscape podcast, where we talk about how you can start and grow your hardscaping business. And we've got another I'm a Hardscaper mashup interview where we take a single question that I ask every I am a Hardscaper business owner interview e on the podcast and we take the response and mash it up into a single episode for 2022. So every I Am A Hardscaper interview, we've taken a response to a single question that I ask and have it in this episode all combined in one. And today's episode is brought to you by Cycle CPA. If you need accounting, bookkeeping, or CFO services, reach out to Cycle CPA. They're available at CycleCPA.com. Get $200 off when you mention the How To Hardscape podcast. And we'll talk more about them later in today's episode. But like I said, this is a I am a hardscaper mashup episode and I ask every guest that we have on the show that's a business owner that's an I am a hardscaper business owner interview I ask them at the end what is one thing you know now that you wish you knew from the very beginning it's a very insightful question I really like this question the most out of any that I ask it's always been a part of these types of episodes when I have a business owner on I want to ask them this and I want to have it at the end of every episode one common response that we actually actually get quite often is around knowing your numbers or knowing your finances in the business. This is a very common response that we've got. And since I've started How to Hardscape from the very beginning, one of the first products that we launched was the budget and estimate spreadsheet. I'm sure you've heard about it before. If you follow us along on Instagram or even this podcast here, we talk about it every once in a while. But I've got such a great response from this over the years. We're coming up three years that this has been on the market. And the response that I get from it has been really great. Great. There's always been one drawback though to it, and that's that it is a spreadsheet. And even though like a software works very similar to that of a spreadsheet, a software really streamlines things. It's working off a database much like a spreadsheet would, but a software is a little bit more user friendly and there's a little bit more features and things that we can offer with a software. So that being said, we do have an announcement with this at the end of this year. We don't know the exact date just now, but the budget and estimate spreadsheet and the bookkeeping spreadsheet that also can go along with that as well is actually going to be discontinued. And that's because we've been working on a software to replace this budget and estimate spreadsheet. I had envisioned that this would eventually come. I didn't think it would come as soon. I really wanted to optimize that spreadsheet year in and year out to be able to get it to a point where it was the best version that it could be. But the next step in the process, I really couldn't accomplish with just a spreadsheet. I needed to to make it a software. I needed to get it into the form of a software. So I made that leap and it should be out by the end of this year, which will be the same time that the budget and estimate spreadsheet gets discontinued. Now, if you've already purchased the budget and estimate spreadsheet, you'll always have that. You'll always have my support, any questions that you may have with it. It's still an excellent tool to have in your business, especially if you're just an owner operator, one to two crew business. I've always said that that's like the optimal thing for that spreadsheet. You can make it work with many multiple divisions, many multiple uh, employees, whatever that might be. It just gets a little bit less streamlined. It's a little bit less efficient than what a software could be for your business. There's also solutions that we just can't really get into a spreadsheet that we want to get into. And that's why we're making the software. So spreadsheet is always going to be supported. It's yours if you own it. It's never going to be just disappeared from your computer or whatever. And that being said, if you want to get the spreadsheet now before it is discontinued, now is your last chance to go ahead and get that because we're going to be moving everything over to the software. So if you're not ready for a software, if you think a spreadsheet's the way you want to go, that's great. Get that because the software will be part of the how to hardscape members only platform. And this has been something that I've been trying to do for members that have signed up. Once you're signed up, you're paying that monthly price every month. It doesn't increase in value when we release more features for How to Hardscape members. That stays consistent forever. 
So I'm always trying to over deliver for our members. And if you are listening to this now, the price has gone up to reflect what this software is at the moment, but we're always going to be improving on this software. Right now, when we release the software, it's going to be including the features from the budget and estimate spreadsheet only. And then there's many more things that we can do to continually improve the software. And that's the route that we're going with this. Really, this announcement is just about the budget and estimate spreadsheet spreadsheet, bookkeeping spreadsheet, those are being discontinued by the end of the year to make room for this software. So if you want to get that one-time payment for the spreadsheet, now's your chance to get it. If you're happy to wait and get in on the How to Hardscape members only platform, now is a better time to get it because we'll have a short-term offer before the price once again goes up next year at the very beginning of the year to continually reflect what value we are bringing our members and lots of great plans with that members only platform. So if you want that, check that out at members.howtohardscape.com. If you want the budget announcement spreadsheet, that's howtohardscape.com. You'll see products at the top on the menu and you can just go down to the spreadsheet, see if it works for you and your business. Those that have already purchased the spreadsheet, you will have a sometime free trial for the members only platform as a thank you for purchasing that budget and estimate spreadsheet. Plus you've already got the budget and estimate spreadsheet anyways. So even if you choose today to go get that budget and estimate spreadsheet, you'll still see the value in the free trial that you'll get out of the members only platform with the money that you spent on the budget and estimate spreadsheet. So there's also that going for you as well. That being said, I've been rambling for way too long. We've got an I am a hardscaper mashup interview. What is one thing you know now that you wish you knew from the very beginning? Business owners will introduce themselves and then give their response to that question. And without further ado, let's get into today's episode. I'm Cruz Lone. I own basically two businesses, Chicago Brick Paving and Chicago Outdoor Designs. I think pre-qualifying clients, so I'm not wasting my time because I used to do 34 estimates after work, just driving around, um, spending all this money on fuel. Uh, chasing all this work that I wasn't getting, you know? So I think um, you have to pre-qualify your clients. You have to ask a lot of questions uh, so you're not wasting your time because there's a lot of clients that they have no idea how much things cost. And um, I'm guilty because, you know, like I know some guys, they're just starting their business. They want to go see all these clients and try to get all this work, but it's, it's nothing wrong with just asking questions, you know, make sure, you know, these clients have the money or um, they're, they're ready to move forward on these jobs. Cause some people, like I said, some clients, they have no idea how much things they cost and they're just wasting your time. So, yeah. So that's the main key, you know, right now, like I said, I pre-qualified my clients by asking a lot of questions and all that. So I'm not really wasting all my time driving around doing estimates that or, or quotes that I'm not going to get the work, you know, I'm Jeffrey Schmidt of down to earth landscaping. And I'm Chuck Gillum of Down to Earth Landscaping. Um, I would say, the for me, the one thing that I know now that I wish we would have done sooner was invest more time in ourselves and our education. Um, we definitely did that throughout the whole process. But once we found our consultant and once we found people that are willing to help us grow and build and be better than, than we were the last day, like better than yesterday those people have really pushed us to to be the next step of a landscaper that next level landscaper so i would say invest in yourself invest in your education um you know get that knowledge and training before you go out there and try to do something incorrectly ask the questions build your community and invest in yourself absolutely yeah and uh you know i'll offer a different insight I would say the implementation of estimating software that we did, and that was just last year, but that has completely changed the game for us. Knowing our numbers, making sure that we're accounting for every single thing that we use on a job site on a day-to-day -day basis, and you know, making sure that we're, we're estimating properly, more so than just kind of inputting numbers into QuickBooks. That has really changed the game for us. We've been able to set our budget, set our profit margins, we can have goals. Uh, a lot of this stuff is more quantitative now, so we can reflect on what we've been doing and learn from any mistakes that we made and you know, make sure that we're not making that same mistake twice. Yeah. But estimating software has been huge, huge.
Yeah, it definitely increased our prices quite a bit. But <laughs> uh, at least we're accounting for everything now. Yeah, we're doing things the right way that we feel like um, our system is is really really dialed in. So we don't miss a lot on the estimating side of things. Yeah. So again, invest in your understanding on the business. Yeah. You know, and, and just the business as a whole. Um, yeah, you can figure it out along the way, but you're going to get a lot further, a lot quicker uh, if you take a couple of those steps. Yeah. Take all the trainings that are out there. Every manufacturer offers trainings. You have awesome training on how to hardscape. You know, all of those things that you can do to elevate yourself and elevate your business are going to pay huge dividends for you in the long run. And yes, it's a time and money investment up front. You might not be able to get as much work done in that moment, but in the long run, all of those things are gonna come back to you. And you. We're 10 years into this and we're not pros by any means. We're still learning every day, but that 10 years of continually learning and continually growing ourselves um, is really starting to pay dividends now. And we're just gonna to continue to build off that. Amazing. Hi, I'm Mike Barker with Elevate Outdoor Living. Knowing your numbers and knowing what to charge, um, how to recoup, you know, your overhead properly, you know, and just how to value your time, you know, and I think that was the biggest struggle was, you know, I, I mean, I'll be the first one to admit, like the first, I don't know, eight years of, of business, you know, I'd go look at a job and be like, yeah, we can do it for that. Not, not even really like knowing why I'm charging that. Right. And it finally, um, I finally got some, some coaching and some help to really knowing your numbers. And I mean, we're dialed in now. So that, that would be the biggest thing. You know, you, you can't, you can't stay in business if you, if you're not profitable. Right. Hi, I'm Jeremy from Will Gates Landscaping. People matter. Relationships matter. So on our website, we actually put that on there. A kind of people first mantra. Uh, relationships are important to us with our suppliers, with our con with our um, employees, and with our clients. Those, those relationships matter a lot to us. But we talked a lot about technique training. You know, in the early years, we got really serious about continuing education as all focused towards installation. A little bit towards business management estimating, but mostly installation. I wish I could have seen back then how important what you want to call soft skills, working with people, how important that was. So since then, I've taken a lot of more courses on working with people, okay, reading books. You know, I believe that the concept of servant leadership is a good one. I'm a Christian. I think it's a biblical concept of serving the people we lead, you can get burned out, okay? Um, again, we're a small company, so people can make a really big difference in a small company. One person leaves, one person turns sour, one person's excellent. Whatever scenario you look at, one person makes a really, really big difference in a small company. And I look back at mistakes I've made over the years and say, you know, if I would have had some of the tools back then I have now, when I say tools, I mean knowledge of working with people. I made mistakes. Okay, I really did. And I think that if I would take more management courses, uh, learning how to work with people more effectively, it would have helped a lot. It really would have. Hi, I'm E.T. Leger from Montreal, Quebec. I'm the owner and operator of Leger Landscapes. Can I answer that in two parts? Absolutely. I'll answer that to like... The the, the 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 me starting 12 years ago or 13 and the me starting today all right because i think it, it might be a bit different uh 12 years ago i would have gone and worked for someone uh maybe for a year or or or, or gotten a mentor worked under someone and learned to trade more um i i didn't quite know much about it and i kind of learned a lot just by trial and error and you know first couple of years look back at those old uh, year ends and man like they weren't very i could have like worked at mcdonald's and made more but but you know that was trial error maybe it made it go the way i am also i would have learned uh, more about numbers um knowing my numbers uh, understanding a budget understanding uh, what it costs to be in business and what are the the ups and downs of being uh, you know a business owner, understanding, you know, overhead recovery, understanding, you know, uh, projected expenses and, and all these things that 
I use LMN, but the LMN budget, the free version, and I love it. It's a really great tool. I'm so glad they do it for free because it's a really, it's really helped me and a lot of other contractors I know really know what to charge and, and not when you're charging, if someone says that's expensive, you can say, well, this is my cost of doing business. So if I, if I literally say, I'll give you a discount, I'm taking food off my table. And with, I have a wife and three kids, like it's their it's their future that's being on the line here, right? I don't work for free. So it's, um, that would be the old, that would be what I would, what I would tell myself when I started off then, um, work for a mentor and have, um, and have a, a better grasp of numbers. Now, if you're starting a company in 2022, I would say invest heavily in two things, software and the right tools. Software being the importance of, you know, especially in, um, and for, for, for estimating, for follow-ups, for phone answering services, um, uh, pricing softwares, CRMs, that's a key. Like there's no way you can, well, you, if you want to take 10 years off, save 10 years of your life, do that. You leverage the, the power of software. We spent about $7,000 on softwares this year, uh, various different phone answering services, CRMs, uh, quoting softwares, uh, accounting softwares. And it takes, you'll save a lot more um, by spending money on software than you ever will hiring this year, the person to that role, especially now at the labor market, that is where it is. Uh, if you can leverage software to your to your advantage, uh, and even the fact that we can sometimes get quotes out within 24 hours so quickly or, or using in Google Street View and like measuring out properties and sending them a quote virtually, people were blown away. We, we still got, you know, we almost sent $100,000 of virtual quotes this year. Never even saw the property just by pictures and dimensions that were sent to us. So really cool. Uh, secondly would be, you know, using the right equipment, especially with the labor shortage. Once again, not that we're... Uh, you know, blaming the labor shortage all the time, but but it, it, it is a reality and using, making sure that you you have in your team the right tools and make it attractive, make it people, they, they see that they can kind of work in your team as it being a, a sustainable career uh, for their health and also, you know, pay them a living wage and make sure that the guys can, can have the right equipment so that they don't burn out in, in two years and say, man, like, my back's down, I can't landscape anymore, or I can't hardscape, you know? And so those are the two things I would say for for the me now that we're starting, I would really uh, focus on technology uh, being number one and also the right tools for the job to really as a retention tool as well. My name is Ken Deemer. I am one of the managing partners at Local Roots Landscaping. My name is Patrick Murray and I'm one of the managing partners at Local Roots Landscaping. Okay, yeah, I think it's the, uh, the power of delegation and the power of trust. Um, so that's something we really struggled with. And I think it's really easy to struggle with. You've built, you've put in so many Saturdays, so many Sundays, even sometimes building this thing by the sweat of your own brow, by risking your own savings, risking your own everything really to get it going, that uh, letting go of it is one of the hardest things to do. But I would say delegating first uh, tasks, uh, and then secondly, and way more importantly, leadership to our team has been one of the most freeing and empowering things that we've ever done. And uh, just being willing to step back and uh, trust your team, uh, trust God and uh, trust kind of like all the preparation and the practice and the planning and the system building that you put into it to make it happen. Uh, and then just be able to like step back and take a deep breath and be like, I've done everything I can. It's like sending a kid off to college, I think, you know, just saying it's like, okay, you know what? We're just gonna let it run now and, and happen. And I think uh, we, if there's one thing I'd say, I look back and wish we had done sooner, it would have been that. It's just kind of, uh, stopping white knuckling every last little bit of the company and just letting go and letting other people run with it. Definitely. Yeah. And similar there uh, for me, but um, for me, it would be patience and it's something we're all learning at all times. Uh, but Ken and I both are like quick movers. We want things to happen now, uh, you know, and if they don't, we're wondering what's broken or what's happening. And so I'd say uh, something we always say is, uh, just the importance in the long game and like everyone overestimates what they can do in a month, but underestimates what they can do in a year and realizing like, you know, bigger right now isn't necessarily the right thing and it's not necessarily the good thing. Um, but realizing like, oh, wow, looking back and seeing how much happened over the last nine years is incredible, even though, you know, many, many times in those years, I wanted things to just like rapidly happen. And, and I like couldn't quite have that. And so like realizing the stress and anxiety, like isn't worth it all the time. Like, and it's okay to actually be not complacent. I would say it's never okay to be complacent, but, but to be comfortable learning at a, at, at a rate of speed that you can absorb, I guess. Right. And, and realizing like, sometimes it's okay to 
to take the foot off the brake or off the uh, the gas and to realize like, I'm going to really take time to embrace this moment, learn it. And then once I have it down, we're going to go, but it yeah. doesn't have to be that way all the time. And I think we ran ourselves into the ground several times with that mindset. And I'd say, thank God. Now we have a, a staff and a team around us that actually helps us to balance that. Uh, so it really prevents us in, in a way, uh, which has been cool, but um, yeah, just the importance of the long game would be huge. And just the patience and, and taking some time to celebrate. We still don't celebrate a ton. So like it's, I'm learning all these things as I'm even talking right now. Right. I just want to take a break from today's episode to talk about our sponsor cycle CPA. You may have a CRM or project management software in place, but what data are you using to ensure your estimating is accurate? Having a proper accounting setup and accurate bookkeeping done is key to understanding overhead expenses and other costs that must be recouped in your estimates. Cycle CPA is a remote bookkeeping and CFO firm that helps to connect the dots from the financial reports to the hardscape and landscape data needed in order to reach high profits. They provide landscape and hardscape industry benchmarking, job costing financials by service line, advisory meetings, and much more. Cycle CPA's team of accountants are specialized within the hardscape and landscape industry, and you can visit them at cyclecpa.com and for $200 off, mention the How to Hardscape podcast. Now back to our episode. Hi, I'm Chris Morales, and I'm the owner-operator of Morales Outdoor Living. It's not, man, because from from the very beginning, man, I, I invested into like the, like in those mentorship groups. And I just I was learning from all these great guys that have struggled and went through all the, the went through all the mistakes and failures and w- were putting it out there. So man, I was lucky to have been put, put myself in that situation. So then what, what's the biggest thing you've learned from your your biggest takeaway from these these mentorship groups that you're in? Because you're you're obviously doing a lot right, right? Like you got your branding's on point. It's clean. It 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 uh, communicates exactly what you want. That's that's it. you 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 hit it on the head right there, man. Is my branding? Um, branding for sure is what I have grabbed from from Jack more than anything. He he does it so cleanly, and I've been able to um, I rebranded my company in 2020 uh, based off of all his you know just the way he he does things. Um, and I try to make it cleaner, just like you said. I try to make it look um, more towards an outdoor living, this company. And yeah, that's that's the biggest thing was branding and how I push my content out. And yeah, I mean, it's just it's, it's been the best thing for me. Hi, I'm Greg Burnett, 38 years old from Vineland, Ontario. I'm the president of Niagara Outdoor Landscaping. Yeah, so I, I think I touched on it before when we hired our first estimator. We realized that for years we hadn't been charging enough for our services. You know, we started growing at first, we were, you know, hesitant to allow someone to make, you know, someone else do a difficult paver on a cut or whatever it was, you knew, you know, if you did it yourself, it would be done the right way, right? So I guess if I would have realized that a little earlier, we would have been a little further ahead now. Uh, basically, I think, you know, now it's, you know, comes down to being a great leader as we continue to grow here, you know, right now we're not so much looking to, to add all these new crews, you know, we're already booked out for the entire season, but we're focused, focused on being more efficient, um, you know, focus on more one-on-one time with my team members, training, anything that can, you know, help strengthen our team and, and improve our profit margins and our, and our bottom line. Kind of going off that, when you set a goal, like improving efficiency in your business, how do you go, like, what's the action plan that goes into improving efficiency? Like, what areas do you look at? What do you try to implement in your business to improve those efficiencies? Yeah, so, you know, the time tracking, I mean, yeah, labor hours are the biggest thing, right? So, yeah, we, we're, we're tracking those times uh, through LMN time, you know, and putting, you know, pictures on the site so we can refer back to things. And, you know, the guys just reviewing the time. So, you you're, you got that kind of dashboard with that target goal and for the hours and the guys can see that we give them the whole job package and yeah, them hitting those goals. You, you miss it. You got to, re- you got to review it. So setting those goals, this is what your, your goal is for that job. And then actually reviewing it, right. Is it's important, right? So we don't, we haven't done that for every single job, but again, that's our, our goal now is to kind of hire someone in the office this year that can, you know, manage the office. We haven't had anyone doing that. We've kind of, our designers have always been answering the phone and, and that's been a big time, a killer for them so allow them to kind of focus on their job and have someone that can review this stuff on, on a more you know daily basis essentially right so 
Hey, I'm Nick from NRX Landscaping. And I'm Rocco from NRX Landscaping. I think, uh, I think something that I wish I would have known is how easy it is to lose equipment or lose machines because whether it's getting lost or getting stolen, uh, these tools are they're often misplaced. So I would say, I wish that we were, we knew how organized we had to be and how careful we had to be with people stealing our equipment or misplacing any equipment. So I would say, you know, invest in a good yard, get some video cameras and, uh, you know, hold on to your belongings. Yeah, I think that's a horror story. We got a lot of stuff stolen. <laughs> <laughs> that's another, you know, we had like a, we had a dump, a dump trailer with a, we had a KC-70 oh. in there. We had an excavator in there. Everything got stolen from us. Um, and then, yeah, it was, it was, it was a pretty big hit, but kind of just didn't Eat laugh it. it off or anything, but we, we pushed through. Um, yeah, I think that's a great, that's a great one. Yeah. Invest in a good yard and something very secure. Security is, is vital. Yeah, uh, in this line of work where your machines are worth so much, not just financially, but work wise, like you're stuck without them. Um, I you do not want to go shoveling a thousand square foot backyard with uh, with your hands. <laughs> yeah, I would say also keep everything clean, like at the end of every day, make sure everything's nice and tidy, make sure everything's clean and organized, and um, grease your machines, don't forget the grease. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, main, maintenance. <laughs> maintenance. Um, I, in the very beginning, we I wasn't I well, be, even be, especially before Rocco came on board, I was not one for maintenance. I didn't. <laughs> I thought I just you just ran a saw until it broke down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we didn't know. But that's something yeah, exactly. We, we didn't. We didn't know. We we kind of we kind of just had to. A lot of what we know now is some things that we've had to learn. The hard way. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. The hardscape way. <laughs> yeah, the hardscape way, yeah. Hi, my name is Landon. I own Planet Green Landscapes with my partner, Tom. Shoot, I, I've heard you ask a couple other people this question, so I should be more prepared for it. I think, without sounding too cheesy, everything that you kind of go through in business, that, that leads to, right? If you don't make those mistakes and whatever, you, you wouldn't learn the same way. So I don't think I have any regrets that way. I would say the biggest thing is to just recognize or realize your own value in what you're doing. I think landscaping as a, it's a low entry level. Like there's not a, it's a, it's a low barrier to entry. Sometimes people can view it a certain way because of that, or maybe, maybe I just view that it myself that way. But if you're going to go and provide good value, good quality and work your butt off, there's no shame in making money, making, you know, good money. Um, it allows you to treat your employees better, give them more opportunities. So I would say the biggest thing would be understanding that, um, that you're providing value for people. There's nothing yeah, wrong with charging I don't want to make it worth. too financial. Yeah. That's, I guess that's what I was going to say. It's like, I don't want to make it all about finances. When I say that, I think instead of trying to be, you hear a lot about like the grind and the hustle and all this stuff. For me personally, I'm, I think you have to look at what you want to get out of your business. And if that's great relationships, time with your family, um, you know, maybe you do take on a little less work. Maybe you don't grow. I don't have the interest to grow the same rate that a lot of other companies do because I don't think I'm well suited for it. So, and now with social media, it kind of exacerbates that problem a little bit too, right? It's easy to get caught up in what everyone else is doing. I think you, you just be focused on yourself, be aware of what other people are doing, but pay attention to sort of your own journey, what you hope to get out of, um, you know, business ownership. And, and I think ultimately that's going to be the most rewarding and how we to do it. I think, yeah, I agree. The business has to really match your lifestyle and not everyone is suited to, you know, grow this many multiples per, per year. And then to really see their personal life really decline or any something like that. But, uh, you know, it's really got to match your lifestyle. And I think social media is amazing. And I've learned a lot from a lot of people on social media. It's also something that uh, you can look to and get kind of discouraged if you're not where somebody else is at or uh, you don't have the equipment that somebody else has. has and, 
and yeah, I, I totally agree with kind of your your encompassing point there that you were uh, nailing there. Yeah, social media is is an interesting one. I think you could probably do a whole separate podcast on that. It's been I get very inspired by a lot of a lot of the other companies I see on there. Um, people are doing amazing work. I feel like that elevates our our industry. So I see all the positives there. I also see, you know, the the negative side of it where, like you mentioned, where if someone feels like, oh, look what they're doing, or why can't I get on projects like that or grow like that? Nothing is what it seems like on social media. Everyone, everyone gets the portfolio shots. There, no one's taking pictures of the, you know, the warranty work and you know the uh, <laughs> the whatever. So, but so I think if you keep it in perspective, you use it as something that's inspirational and if it's motivational for you to, you know, I get excited when I see a beautiful design. You see a lot of the same stuff. So when I see something that's really cool and unique, I'm like, wow, that's you know that pushes me to try to be more creative. So. I think you got to really just keep that in check. Um, and again, like it's the grind, the hustle, trying to do what other people are doing. If you're fine working by yourself every day and you get home to your family and your kids and you know, you're doing it, whether it's, it's million dollar jobs or it's um, you know, $2,000 jobs. If you enjoy what you're doing, that's amazing. And I think that uh, I think that's probably something that's the hardest thing to recognize on social media. If you feel like you've got to post something that stacks up to what they're doing, I'm not trying to be the best landscaper in the world. I don't think that's a reasonable goal for me. I'm trying to, you know, win as a team. I want my suppliers to love doing business with us. I want my employees to love working here and have opportunities. I want my clients to get good value out of working with us. And um, for myself, as the as one of the owners, I want to have good relationships with all those people and have time left over to spend with my family, and uh, or not even time left over. I want to prioritize that time, and uh, that's what's important to me. I am Aaron Colley with Spaces Design Build. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. Do it right away. If you if you're going to get into this, reach out and find a mentor. I mean, it's something I wish I'd have done four years ago. I think we'd be further ahead than where we are now had I done that. Just ask for help. I mean, it's not a dog eat dog out there. I mean, yeah, you get some of those guys, but just reach out, whether it's on social media, I and mean, really try to find someone in town. The other guy that's helped me a lot is down in South Boston. He's another contractor here. I'm losing his name right now, but just 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 reach out for help because I know. Matt Daly's helped me out with just conversations, Virginia Beach patios, um, suppliers, um, just build relationships on, and, and just get help. I mean, we're, we're, we're in this together. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we all, I mean, I mean, if, if we get together, I think, I think, I, I think the entire industry wins or client wins if we work together. You know, I've, I recently brought another contractor on site to, for a, for a ceiling training day, you know, we had a rep down that, Hey, do you mind if these guys? Yeah, sure. I mean, we're in this together. Yeah. They're going to seal patios. There's going to be competition, but you know what? That, that's going to make us all better. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I talk to those guys often, Rosetti hardscapes. Um, you know, they're, you know, you know, we're all in this together. You know, my one thing would be is reach out for help. You know, if you don't know something and, and, and get your numbers. This is Nick Cardello with the yard fathers premier outdoor living. Mm. I can only pick one. Only one. Oh. <laughs> and it's funny because it has nothing to do with that. It would, it would probably be on the business end. Um, you know, it would, I wish I knew my financials um, or, you know, how to job cost and how to just figure out my profit margins and, and my net and everything. Um, I feel like that could have saved me a lot of pain, sorrow, and time. And it, I feel like it would have progressed my business a lot faster than it did as well. Hi, my name is Antonio Zeppa. I'm with Zeppas. Probably to get in a different industry. <laughs> <laughs> Expand on that for us. Why is that? <laughs> I learned a lot of, uh, I, I, like I said, I've got several different businesses, and I feel like this is the hardest one. And I learned a lot of lessons here that I try and take 
uh, for other businesses and try and learn from and maybe may or may not do. And I think I love our industry and I'll probably do it for the rest of my life. I think for me, it's an avenue to get into some other things. Um, it's a lot of work. I mean, when you're talking about equipment management and client management, and weather, it's, it's a lot of work. I think there's a lot of other businesses. There's also low barriers to entry. So like, you know, Bob next door could start a, you know, chucking a truck could start a business tomorrow and, and he is competing with you, you know? And so the low barriers to entry makes it to where it's very competitive market. I think a lot of people don't know their costs. They can stay in business for a long time and not know their costs. And it just drives down the whole industry. So like for me, I want to be involved on a national level as much as possible to elevate the industry, whether that's just with horticulture techniques, whether that's with pricing, what, with whatever it may be, like we're constantly students and we need to continue to elevate the industry. I think in a lot of cases, like people are still charging the same price they did in 99, you know, over 20 years ago. Uh, yeah. Great, great, uh, great things of topics of discussion. Do you want to talk about any of your other businesses or do you want to just stay focused here on, uh, on your, your maintenance and, and hardscape business? Yeah, I got, I got, um, I got a couple I'll expand on. So are talking about, you know, this business leading into other avenues. Um, I've got a laser engraving business. Um, and basically we specialize in printing whiskey barrel heads. So being in the, you know, bourbon capital of the world, we have um, availability to a lot of whiskey barrels and we just take the heads and we engrave them. And, and I've done this for tons of hardscapers, landscapers. We ship them out all over the nation. Um, so, so that's one thing. We've got several, um, the, the landscape business has allowed me to get into some rental. I think we've got maybe, maybe like six or seven tenants um, between you know, our facility now and the facility we used to have. I have some landscape tenants here. Oh yeah. It's kind of funny. Um, and then we're, we're building a uh, event space right now. It's called the greenhouse. So it'll be called the greenhouse at Zeppa's and the event space on, on site at our facility. And uh, it's been, we, we've probably been into it six months now and it's starting to get, really start to take off. And so you've been able to apply things that you've learned with this, this first business and to start to, you know, build these other businesses up and, and have all these different uh, avenues of revenue coming in now. Is this the plan moving forward to kind of scale all of these things up? Yeah, I think, you know, our tagline is a service for every season. And so we're spread really thin. And one thing I've learned with these other businesses is just to like really stay focused on that one item. And just and just stay focused on that one item and, and keep pounding and grinding and uh, staying focused and not really deviating from that path because you'll be a lot of things to nobody you know um, and, and you you want people to know what you specialize in and what you're good at. Chris Hopkins here. Three seasons landscapes. Yeah, that's that's a good question as well. Um, I was thinking about it. There's not any like little thing that. I wish I knew because I feel like I had a good head on my shoulders and saw my family doing businesses themselves and I knew those little issues like, oh, it's going to be hard to find employees, it's you know hard to find work sometimes, or clients are annoying, that type of thing. Um, I think honestly, to like current date now, what I know that I wish that you know 10 years ago in high school or even when I just started taking it really seriously and focusing on growth knew is that... And it's hard to tell if it's like this in other businesses, but the landscape industry specifically, I wish I knew like how many other offshoots of landscaping you had to be an expert in to be successful. Like we started out or when anybody starts out, you want to build beautiful patios. You want to build a backyard with a water feature and make people happy and, um, you know, obviously make money and be successful. But like I'm finding myself now, it's like all of a sudden I have to be an expert in like lease management and you know, okay, how long do we keep a truck? When is it at its peak value when I can resell it based on the kilometers and the condition and how we've used it? Um, like all these little things, it's like, I didn't expect to be a mechanic or uh, um, you know, somebody who has to learn how to 
buy trucks and sell mm-hmm. trucks at the right time and buy pieces of equipment and skid steers and what what equipment do we need for this job and is this valuable for everything can we actually get away with getting something cheaper that's better in the long term so all these little things that owning a business and specifically in the landscape industry i think um that you don't realize when you're getting started you're going to have to get into later on even things like in the winter like you become a flipping weatherman every day. Like I'm checking the weather network and other apps 20 times a day in the winter because you never know what can happen yes. with snow. Um, so you, you just get into, I wish to sum it up, I wish that I knew then um, how many other areas of expertise I had to get into to be successful in the original like base expertise goal of being a landscape contractor, quote unquote, Mm -hmm. you had to do so that I could start learning some of that at the beginning, at least slowly or talking to some other guys about those things. Because we always had a great relationship with other contractors where I could call somebody I knew and say, hey, we're doing, you know, a thousand square feet of interlock in the next couple days. We've never done that much before. What do you guys use? to make sure that everything's sloped properly or when you have to encounter multiple slopes and there has to be a little swale to direct water away from the pool deck but also the house and the cabana. Um, things like that that I talk to guys about, I wish that I'd also ask them, hey, like, what do you guys do for your trucks? What, you know, do you keep them forever? Are you gonna run them into the ground? Do you flip them? Um, you know, what about guys? Like, what do you do for benefits? Like all this other stuff. So, mm-hmm. and it's fun because that's the part of the business that I love is running a business and the operations and keeping people happy and figuring out, figuring out problems and building cool stuff. But I think that anybody starting a business should also recognize that there's a lot more hats and like very important hats that you have to wear later on in the business that you don't even have to think about for the first like couple of years. Um, And that's why when owners step back from the day-to-day operations, you know, it's also because maybe they're getting older over time and they don't want to be here for 12 hours. And, but it's also because there's other important things to running a successful business than just the day-to-day operations. Um, you know, like insurance policies and lease management, like I talked about and benefits and keeping guys and, you know, company logos and like branding and making sure everybody's happy and marketing. So it's like you understand when you see bigger businesses with guys that, you know, are owners that aren't really involved anymore and you understand why it's, it's not because they're sitting at home. Well, sometimes it might be, but hopefully not. It's not because they're sitting at home. It's because they're doing those important, important jobs that you don't see on a day to day or even like month to month basis. But it's those things that really, propel your business to succeed later on definitely thank you for listening to today's podcast episode once again that budget and estimate spreadsheet will be discontinued by the end of the year software will be announced when that will be live for how to hardscape members only so check that out at members dot how to hardscape.com see if that training platform is right for you your business whether you want to get new skills for yourself or to train employees their certificates available when a course is completed and that could be a great way to get employees trained get them skilled up and to create some sort of incentive program around that in your business once they complete a training program as well as the software will be available for you there as a member and you're grandfathered in at whatever price you sign up at for any features that continuously come out to members only so whatever price you sign up at is the price that you're going to pay as long as you remain a member for that and right now that's going to include the training videos that we've already got on there like installing interlocking concrete pavement, retaining walls, fire features, lighting, knowing your numbers, budgeting, estimating, and a few other courses that we'll have out by the end of the year as well. And then next year, we've got great more content around the corner that we'll be announcing here shortly as well for members only. So I'll leave it there at that. Check those out if you are interested. And thank you to Cycle CPA for sponsoring today's podcast episode. If you need accounting, bookkeeping, CFO services, check them out, cyclecpa.com. Mention the How to Hardski podcast, get $200 off their services there. And we look forward to meeting with you next week on the How to Hardski podcast.